entertainment center. We're just gonna be spraying the backs of this entertainment center. We got our Durapoxy right here. The color is, it's kind of like a turquoise color. You probably can't see that right there. It's in a deep tint base. So it's not gonna be an easy thing to spray. You can't do it in one coat because it'll run really easy. So we're gonna do try multiple fog coats and see how it turns out. So stay tuned. So here we are getting this thing set up. We're gonna be spraying this with an airless sprayer. Uh, I don't think we'll be brushing and rolling it, will we? We just got two panels back here that we're spraying. Got our can right here. Um, we're gonna be setting it up with an airless sprayer. We got, this is a Titan 440 sitting here. We're gonna be running it probably about 1800 PSI, right in that range. What tip do we have there, John? We have a 310 tip. We're gonna be spraying it with a uh, Rack X um, or a Rack or a Graco. Um, they've changed things. So this is an FF. LP tip now. Mm -hmm. So I'm um, a Graco FF LP tip, which is the fine finish, low pressure tip. So we're going to probably be running it, you know, 1800 PSI. We'll mess around with it to maybe even lower pressures than that since we got a low pressure tip. Let me see the can. Here's a little bit. The can itself, Durapoxy. It's an interior product. I know they reformulated it previously and it used to be interior exterior, not when I used it previously before, like 10 to 13 years ago. Heard they had a lot of problems with the product when it was an interior exterior product. We're using semi-gloss, back of the can, application says you can brush, roll, or spray. The coverage 250 to 300 square feet, dry times two to four hours, clean up soapy water. It does come with a limited warranty. It does, I'm not sure what your limited warranty means. It, uh, there's no year warranty to it. it. Has this long explanation of all the limitations that I want to read about right there. John, do you have any information on Kelly Moore's Durapoxy? You know, when we kind of threw it out there to see what other people thought of it, we got some mixed feedback back and forth. People did say it did harden up really well once it had dried, but um, that since it was reformulated, it, it had some issues, but then like Chris said, it's kind of gone back and forth and maybe they've gone back to more of an original formula. So we are going to find out, but we did hear thinner coats is better. It does run easily, which I guess we're going to find out. This we'll is find a pretty out. deep base, uh, deep color. So yeah. I think it would run easily either way, but it'll be a, it'll be a test. Yeah, so I, I did talk to a paint rep about the product and they explained to me that it had been reformulated multiple times when it was reformulated for the outside that it, it, it cracked and had a lot of issues. When I used the product um, years ago, like 10 to 12, 13 years ago, they said this current formulation is now just that old formulation. And so we'll see, because I remember how well it worked for me. I, liked, I remember that I liked it a whole lot. I used it and all their deep colors like blacks and stuff. Anytime I was spraying any type of trim package or anything with a dark color like a black or something, I use Durapoxy. So here we're gonna go, here we go, we're gonna test it out. Um, what do you think consistency wise? That's pretty thin. That is, um, that really seems thin. a lot thinner than when I've used it before. So that in itself right there doesn't seem to um, be the same. It's very thin, um, very watery. So with just that in mind, just seeing how thin it is, uh, I'm definitely not gonna be spraying it on there very heavy. I'm gonna go with a really light fog coat first, first pass, so we'll show you what that looks like. It smells like ammonia and something sweet. It smells like, uh, gotta smell some um, ammonia. It's interesting, John smells something sweet too. I definitely could smell some drying chemicals in there. It smells pretty strong. Uh, I can't smell as well as John does because I've had sinus surgery. And it doesn't make me smell too good anymore. Hey, if you like our videos, please consider subscribing to our channel. And weren't we just down there? <laughs> we, <laughs> we were just down there. Please consider. How did we get up here? I, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's magic. Please consider giving us a thumbs up if you like our videos. Also, if you got any comments, tips, or tricks that you want to share with us, leave them in the comments section below. So it's been under an hour now, in probably like 45 minutes, not quite an hour, and the coat that I sprayed on here is dry. 
dry enough that I can rub my hand on there. So it says it dries on the can two to four hours, but that's already dried, ready to second coat. I'm gonna spray another coat on there. I sprayed, you know, um, not a fog coat. I went a little bit faster. It almost covered in 100%, seems to be, you know, really thin. It would have been nice if um, it had just a little bit more body, but no runs, hung very well. And John sprayed a lot more. Uh, or went a little bit slower on his, so he got a lot more paint on there. His almost covered, you know, in one coat, possibly could have got away with shooting it with one coat. But I'm gonna spray the second coat on here, and we'll show you what that looks like. I'm gonna go just a little, about, probably about the same speed this time. But uh, I would say, I mean, for the color it is, this deep color, I think that the coverage is excellent. That's probably like, you know, a five-star coverage with that stuff. So, so far, pretty impressed. Pretty impressed with the dry time. Here we go, always wear a respirator. And let's go. There we go, we're gonna let John spray his side now and see what it looks like. I mean, so far that looks really, really good, gels out really good, so far I like it. So Don, looks like you're experiencing some taping issues. You got to re-tape yours before spraying it. You can yeah. tell us what's going on here. Uh, so the we use frog tape all the way around this deep color. We're not doing the white on the the rest of the the bookcase. It's curling the frog tape up. Uh, what we noticed is it didn't do it on Chris's where he did a lighter coat, but on mine where I did a heavier coat, it's sitting on those edges a little bit more. Um, whatever the chemicals are in it or however fast it's drying, it's actually pulling that frog tape and causing it to curl back. So I am having to go through and remask the those edges for the second coat. So that is something to kind of keep in mind when you're when you're planning on how thick and heavy of a coat you want to put on. So through the magic of post-production in YouTube, we are at a different location and we're trying Durapoxy Extra White Base to see how we like that uh, versus the Ultra Deep Base that we tried with that teal color. So Chris, we're going to be using that Durapoxy Semi-Gloss. There's no pigment added to this, right? Nope, there's nothing. So we're going to check and see how it hangs, how it sprays, and if we like it as much as we did that Ultra Deep Base, but with nothing else added to it. Let's go give her a try right now. Bam! Okay, here we are, John. We've finished our test with their epoxy, so Give me your thoughts before I give you my thoughts. I think that I like the sheen. I like, uh, it's a semi-gloss sheen. The sheen looks nice after it's all done. It dries very fast within about 45 minutes, give or take. Um, it, it is dry to the touch. Um, it's, I don't wanna say it stinks, but there is a strong ammonia smell from it drying out so quickly. And I think I'll leave the rest for you to explain. <laughs> so um, uh, we do have some guys working over there and that's kind of some interesting sound effects that go along with this video. Um, <laughs> I don't know if they'll stop for us but we'll just we'll, we'll hope they will but if they don't we'll just go with it. But yeah so here, here we're spraying some doors today and with the white and one thing we ran into is the Durapoxy fish eye in over what we believe where we did some spot priming and we used um, a synthetic shellac primer and we went around spot priming some of these spots on the doors and it fish eyed where we believe over the synthetic shellac. Then we sprayed an oil based um, bonding primer uh, over that and it fish eyed over the top of that. So it was kind of, kind of an issue. We did call up, uh, we purchased this from Miller Paints and we called them up and they did have some amazing customer service. I gotta give them a shout out for that. Yeah, you dealt with them. props to the first paint company I've ever spoken to that took responsibility for an issue with a product. That, I, I didn't even know what to say. Like, I was speechless on the phone. 
we're, I think we're still in shock. I am a little bit of shock still. Yeah. So, I mean, big props to Miller. If you uh, want to go buy paints from a uh, paint store, at least the one here in Boise, Idaho, with some amazing customer service. So th they did, they're resolving it by giving us some uh, different product. But, you know, with that said, that aside, this fisheye, they said that I think it was resolved. Yeah, so they were under the impression from Kelly Moore that, that the fisheye problem had been resolved. So it was a known issue. That's our paint. That's our paint coming. So that it was a known issue and they've um, pulled those lots off the paint and they resolved it. And they said that these lots were resolved, but apparently it's not. So um, um, and they want the paint. So we're going to have to give them the paint. Okay, we're back, and we don't have our paint cans with they us anymore. Can. They took them. Miller Paints came in here and took them, so we don't have them no more. So, um, anyways, some of the things I do like about the product. So, we just talked about the fish eye, which um, you know, just be aware that that's there, and um, you, there you could run into that problem until they get all the batches out. But I really like the dry time. This stuff dries really fast. Mm -hmm. And I do like the finished look of it. I like the sheen and I look how like how the paint looks, you know, the dried look. So this one has got to be resprayed, so that's not a good example. But um, anything you like about it? Yeah, like I said, I, I like the sheen. I like how quickly it dries. I like how it does level out beautifully. Um, what we've heard on like Facebook and Instagram is that it does it touches up well. Um, the, there are a lot of people that like using it. There were a couple comments about that maybe sometimes it, it feels a little sticky afterwards. I haven't seen that with what I've been using and, and we've used um, both the deep base and a really deep teal that had a lot of pigment and a white that was just untinted. Uh, what I will say is the untinted white was a, it was considerably thicker than the deep base teal, but there was a lot more pigment added to that one. So. It was extremely thick, and uh, the first door I sprayed with it, I sprayed it pretty heavy. It hung very well. It, like I said, John, it gelled out very well. Um, the, the finish, um, it, it leveled out and gelled out very well. So I did like that. And then the lap marks and self, you, you couldn't see any lap marks on the ones I sprayed really thin. So I think just overall it sprayed really well. Yeah. One thing I do not like so much is the strong odor. It is a very strong smell. It's got some um, kind of harsh chemicals. John was reading about it, um, but you know that's part of what makes it dry so fast. And so I was wearing a respirator the whole time, a charcoal respirator, and I don't have a problem with it there. And you know we sprayed it in, in here about maybe an hour ago or so, and the odor's not so bad now. But when you're spraying it, it's extremely strong. Um, I did. We did have some fish eye issues, and I was brushing it out on the doors where it fish eyed, and it seemed to brush really well where it was fish eye, and so um, that's a good thing. Anything else about the product that you might want to say, John, before yeah. we close this thing Not out? Not off the top of my head. I mean, how many stars would you give this product? Okay, it's time for our star rating, John. We had the, the opportunity to spray it one more time. You sprayed white on some uh, piece of um, B board down here that had a bunch of Bondo on it. What did you think of the coverage with that? I thought the wet hide was great, but that's not enough. It's gotta have a dry hide too, and it just didn't have a great dry hide. Now, to be fair, we are using an untinted white base with some L4, if they added some titanium, something like that to it. That might take care of the issue, might have a little bit better of a coverage. Um, it was kind of a bummer. Yeah, the, the white didn't cover very well. We were impressed with how the deep base did cover. The deep base so, covered um, great. So it yeah. did cover great. So, um, but we got the two different bases there, and I don't know if they have like an ultra deep base or not, but we haven't tried that if they do. So it's time to give it a star rating. I think there was one other thing. Uh, the dust that the paint created, I think the dust that it creates is, um, probably maybe significantly more than what we're accustomed to or yeah. a little bit more yeah and some of that you know we could dial it in we were using a Graco fine finish low pressure tip so we were running probably around 1200 psi with the tip we were using which did help with some of the dust but it definitely was dustier than some of the products we've used most of the products we've used in the past in my opinion your face does look pretty dusty today. It's a little dusty. <laughs> so, John, um, why don't you go ahead and start it off with a star rating? I think that I would be inclined to give the deep base 
a three and a half star and the white base a three star out of five. Um, there you go, you got his rating. I think, um, and I'm kind of like in the lines with John, I'll just give it once a one rating though, I think with them combined. And then, and, um, and I don't know, we just, with the issues with the fish eye and I'm a little bit concerned about the paint. And so I, I don't want to overrate it and stuff because I don't want to steer people in the wrong direction. Um, or, and we don't know if this problem is going to be corrected or if this is going to be typical with the paint. I think I'm going to go with three stars with it. Um, three star rating overall with both of them combined. Mm -hmm. So um, there you have it. Once again, if you guys have used this product, you know, this was just a one, two day test. It was a two day test. Um, let us know what you think of the product um, in the comments right below. Just leave them right there. If you've used it, you know, long term, short term, we're not sure because they did reformulate it multiple times. So um, if you've used it, with, especially within the last year to two years, we would like to know what you think about it. That's how we learn. Yep. And if, um, <laughs> it's over. And we can actually dub the rest of that other video in the beginning. Yeah, and this is a kind of a semi-regional product, right? I think they're yeah. pretty big on the, in California, kind of on the West Coast. Um, obviously Northwest US, so and you may not have ever even heard of it in your area, but if you have, like you said, let us know, or let us know on Facebook or Instagram, you can catch us there. Idaho Painter on Instagram, The Idaho Painter on Facebook. We would love to get your guys' input because as a Paint Live community, that's how we keep learning too. And if you want to learn more, go check us out on our website, theidahopainter.com, where we got all kinds of tips and tricks, and we got just a cool store. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have, we'll see you on our next video. Ow.